What's good everybody, it's Hoop and Elect, and welcome back to the channel. Now y'all love that 2020 big board that I did, and I got the idea for this video in the comments, so shout out to you for that. The 2021 draft is one of the most anticipated I can ever remember, and there is a ton of talent at the top of the draft. Multi-dimensional wings and forwards have become the league's hottest commodity, and this draft is full of them. Now I'm not going to lie and act like I know who all 60 people in next year's draft are going to be, nor do I know all of their games. But I think I know quite a bit about the best guys, and that's who we're going to focus on in this video. Also, so much can and will change in the next 12 months, or whenever the 2021 draft is, so don't take this as gospel. Starting off, I wanted to give a shout out to a few guys who fell right outside the top 14, and those are Caleb Love, Josh Christopher, Terrence Shannon Jr., David Johnson, Moses Moody, and Scotty Lewis. All of these guys are really talented and should make noise in next year's draft and should compete for the lottery. Now starting with number 14, we've got Ibu Dianko Baji. Now Ibu played with Leandro Bomaro, and if you watched any of their games, you probably noticed him blocking shots or finishing lobs. He's 7'1", with a 7'8 wingspan and a 9'10 standing reach, and he's a freak athlete. He's currently an awful free throw shooter and doesn't have near the skill level that all the rest of these guys would form, and a lot of them after him have, but his athleticism, physical attributes, and shot blocking ability should carry him a long way. And at 13, we have one of the most ridiculous high school athletes I've ever seen, and that is Greg Brown. Greg Brown is a 6'9 forward headed to Texas with an explosive leaping ability that is reminiscent of the likes of Aaron Gordon, John Collins, and Marquise Chris. His effort on the glass and in transition, along with his willingness to defend, will determine how good he can be. He has some guard skills as well, though they still need some work. Coming in at number 12 is Jalen Suggs. Suggs is a physical and tough point guard with a well-rounded game. He hasn't been good from three in pretty much any event that he's played in, but other than that, there aren't a whole lot of weaknesses in his game. It's worth mentioning that he was also a really good quarterback, and those leadership and passing skills show up on the court as well. And it should be interesting to see how he performs at Gonzaga. Now at 11 we have a guy who I could see flying up the boards in what is an already loaded draft, but particularly because of the position he plays. It's Jaden Springer, point guard from Tennessee. Springer is a terrific athlete and not just as a leaper. His footwork and balance is among some of the best in this draft, and I'm confident in his ability to run the show, and he's already a talented scorer. At 10 we have someone a lot of American fans or people with actual lives haven't heard of yet, and that is Usman Garuba. Garuba contributes to one of the best non-NBA teams in the world, which is Real Madrid. He's a bit undersized at 6'8", but he has a 7'2 wingspan. He's not very skilled offensively, but you know what you're going to get with him. He's an athletic rim runner and pick and roll threat who has a high IQ off the ball and defensively. If he can improve as a shooter or a ball handler, his stock may skyrocket as well. Now at 9 we have Kentucky's Terrence Clark. Clark is the prototypical explosive tube guard. He's been one of the best players in amateur basketball for years now. He's got a knack for scoring and does his work as a slasher and on the perimeter. He can take and make tough shots that others really just can't. And he has the frame to be a really nice defender as well. I see him as the guy in the J.R. Smith, Will Barton type of mold. Scotty Barnes is the number eight guy. He's a big, ridiculous athlete with good playmaking skills, and he's more of a power forward type who excels defensively and has a nice post and face up game. If he can't shoot, that will severely hurt his stock, but I don't see him falling too far outside the lottery given what I mentioned before. There just aren't a lot of basketball players that have his combination of attributes in the world. Number seven is Duke freshman Jalen Johnson. Johnson is a big point forward with good playmaking and athletic ability. I want to see him prove himself as a perimeter scorer and shooter in the ACC, but Johnson has the tools to be a top five pick. In a lot of other drafts, he would probably be a surefire top five guy, and then this year's he'd likely be in the contention for the number one overall selection. Zaire Williams comes in at number six. He's yet another wing forward with guard skills. Physically, he's really skinny, but that really hasn't mattered for him yet. He's a gifted scorer and shooter who has an array of moves both inside and out. I would have liked to see him get to play with Tyrell Terry at Stanford, but he declared for the draft. Without him there, it will be his team from the jump. 
He's played as a power forward to this point of his career, but I hope he gets to play the two and the three going forward. At five, we have Williams' Sierra Canyon teammate, BJ Boston. Now, to put it simply, Boston is different. There aren't a lot of guys moving and scoring in the ways Boston does at his height and his age. It takes people years to get good enough to pull off the moves Boston has in his bag, especially at 6'7". He's very thin, so his body should be his main priority over everything else over the next 12 to 18 months. Regardless, I'd be surprised if Boston isn't in the consideration to be a top 5 pick in the 21 draft after his year at Kentucky. And coming in at number 4 is Evan Mobley. Mobley is a supremely skilled and athletic center who can really do it all. He can dribble, pass, and shoot really well for his size, and he does all the regular center stuff well like block shots, rebound, and finish. He's going to have to gain a ton of weight for durability's sake more than anything, as he's currently only a hair over 200 pounds. Mobley is the real deal, and will look to join the list of recent USC draft studs like Kevin Porter Jr. and Onyeka Okongwu. And I'm going to start to sound like a broken record, but man is there some ridiculous talent in this draft. At number 3, Jalen Green is one of the most athletic high school guards I've ever seen. On top of that, he's an astute shot creator and scorer with endless room to grow in that department. He'd have to really disappoint during his year in the G League to not be a top 5 selection in the 2021 draft. The number two player on my big board was a member of the class of 2021 before classing up and exploring college and professional options, and that is Jonathan Kaminga. He's one of the most complete prospects in this draft and will be in serious consideration for the number one pick. He's your prototypical wing at about 6'8", 230, and he has the physical tools to play the four and the raw scoring ability to play the three. He doesn't turn 18 until October, but he's talented beyond his years. Wherever he goes, I hope he's in a situation that makes him go full throttle all the time and showcase his full talent. And at number one, we have the Oklahoma State Cowboy, shout out to OSU by the way, Cade Cunningham. Cunningham is a supersized point guard with athleticism and skill set to match, making him a potential transcendent player. He's a terrific passer and has control of the game in a way that almost nobody has. He has an array of moves from about 10 to 18 feet and will only become more dangerous as he stretches his game out. He has the ability to guard multiple positions and be a really effective defender. If everything works out, we will all get an up close look at him this season as I plan on hopefully making some content with him in the future. Now that's going to do it for this video, plan on seeing scouting videos for this class right after the 2020 draft takes place and as people start playing more games and everything, more and more will just come out from there. And I feel like I and many others have been talking about the 2020 draft for 5 years, so much that I had to switch it up with this video. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, leave a like and comment who your favorite guy is in this draft or someone you think should have made this list. I'm rocking with the combos we're having in the comment section, so let's keep them going. But that's gonna do it for me. I'll catch y'all in the next one. It's Hoop Intellect, AKA Keandre, and I'm out.